Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on glutamate signaling. Now in this video what we're going to do is look at the NMDA receptors, which are a specific type of ionotropic glutamate receptors. Okay, so this is the NMDA receptors. Okay, so uh, the outline for what we're, the way we're going to do this is we're initially going to look at its structure and then we're going to look at how it functions and how it causes depolarization of the cell and then finally we'll look at a few drugs that are associated, you know, that have their actions uh, on the NMDA receptors. Alright, so let's begin with its structure. So the NMDA receptor, similar to the AMPA receptor, is formed from a tetramer. So you put four, um, four subunits together, four proteins together, to make a tetramer of, uh, of subunits, if you like, or of proteins, which together make the pore-forming subunit of this uh, NMDA receptor. So there is the NMDA receptor, formed from four separate subunits. So this is the NMDA receptor. Okay, and there are lots of genes which code for proteins which can be used as the subunit here. And these genes are uh, the uh, GLU N1 gene, then you have the GLU N2A gene, then you have the GLU N2B gene, the GLU N2C gene, the GLU N2D gene, and then finally the GLU N3A, and sorry that wasn't the final one, GLU N3B. Okay, so uh, the seven genes that we have here are categorized into uh, three categories. All of these four are GLU N2s, and this one is the only GLU N1. And then these two down here are all GLU N freeze. Okay, so these are all genes which code for a polypeptide which can be used as this protein which forms one of the four subunits of this tetramer that forms an NMDA receptor. Okay, which is the pore forming unit which allows monovalent cations or divalent cations uh, to move through it, basically. Right, so. Uh, the way in which you can choose to make these receptors from these is very, very set. There are only certain combinations that are allowed. Firstly, you are not allowed at all to make homotetramers anymore. They have to be heterotetramers. Secondly, there are only certain heterotetramers allowed. And thirdly, what's different from AMPA, you can have heterotetramers which are made up of either two of these or three of these. So let me try and explain. Right, so there's a diagram for trying to remember this, and it goes as follows. You put the glue N1 right at the center. Then down here, you put glue N2A. Here you put glue uh, N2B. Uh, then over here, you put glue N2C and then finally GLU N2D there. Then you put the GLU N3A here, and the GLU N3B there. Right, now it's similar to in the case of AMPA. This diagram is going to help us remember which uh, combinations are allowed. Okay, so you draw lines between all of these surrounding uh, subunits, and uh, the GLU N1. So basically you can form heterotetramers where you have GLU N2A with GLU N1, GLU N2B with GLU N1, GLU N3A with GLU N1, GLU N3B with GLU N1, GLU N2D with GLU N1, and GLU N2C with GLU N1. And now the way these heterotetramers assemble is slightly different to the way they assemble in, um, in the case of AMPA receptors. So if we draw this NMDA receptor from the top, then it's going to look something like this. So here's the NMDA receptor as seen from the top. So these are the four separate subunits. Basically, what you have is two GLU N1s sitting right next to each other. 
So these two will be glue N1s here, so let me colour them in a certain colour. So these two are both glue N1s, and they sit next to each other, they bind and form a dimer. So in some ways, people often say the NMDA receptor is a dimer of dimers. Okay, and then these two sitting here will be whichever one you want to pick of these surrounding ones. So you can pick any of those six. So let's, for example, pick uh, glue N2A. So these green ones could be glue N2A. Okay, so that's how you form a heterotetramer. And uh, basically, it's different from an amper because in amper, the two uh, subunits which form the same type were opposite one another in this poor forming unit. They were op diagonally opposite one another, whereas here they are actually sitting uh, next to each other. Okay, now those aren't the only uh, types that you can use, uh, that you can make. Basically, you can also make ones which involve free. Um, three of these subunits. Okay, so you can make firstly this um, one here. So you can make glue N1 with glue 2A and glue N2C. You can also make this one here. We have glue N1 with glue N2A and glue N2B. And finally, you can also make this one here where you have glue N1 with glue N2B and glue N3A. Now, let me show you how these are assembled. So, you might be wondering, okay, so you have three now. Uh, how are we going to make that into a tetramer? Which one do we use two of and which one do we only use one of? Which ones do we only use one of? Basically, glue N1 wins out. In every single NMDA receptor, you must always have two glue N1s, and they always sit next to each other. So here's our glue N1, here's our glue N1. Okay, so I'll colour those in. So you have to have the two glue N1s sitting next to each other. And then the way you can make uh, these um, uh, NMDA receptors from three of them is that you can then have one here that's a certain type, and then another one that's down here, which is a different type, basically. So, um, for example, let's take this one up here, which is made of glue N1. We've got those two. And now let's put in the glue N2A. So this is this one here, just sticking with the convention up there. Glue N2A. And then finally, this yellow one should be glue N2C. Okay, so that's an example of how you can make heterotetramers out of three different choices of uh, subunit, basically. Okay, so those are the two different types of uh, heterotetramers that you can make uh, for your NMDA receptors. Okay, so that now we've looked at the structure of the tetramers out of which NMDA receptors are built. Now let's have a look at the uh, structure of the individual subunits, basically. So if we look at the structure of an individual subunit, it has a very similar membrane-spanning topology to the individual subunits of AMPA receptors. So if we put the cell membrane like so, then basically the uh, structure of one of these individual subunits, so to make it concrete, let's have a look at the structure of glue N1. Okay, so the structure basically looks like this. You have the amino terminus once again on the extracellular aspect of the um, cell membrane. Then you have something known as the amino terminal domain there. Then you go down and form the M1 membrane spanning domain, then the M2 membrane spanning domain, which shouldn't be called a membrane spanning domain because it doesn't actually span the membrane, but it's called the M2 domain anyway. Then you've got M3, which forms a loop before going into M4, like so. And these, this portion of this amino terminus, which is extracellular, and this portion of this M3, M4 loop, again, they um, they dimerize and form the, uh, the ligand binding domain. So this green portion is the ligand binding domain here. So this is the ligand binding domain. Okay, and that um, the other portion, which is special to NMDA receptors, that wasn't there in AMPA receptors. This portion is known as the amino terminal domain. So I'll put that in here. So this is the amino terminal domain. Amino terminal domain. Okay. Terminal domain. Right. And these membrane spanning domains, this one here is known as M1. This loop here is known as M2. 
this loop here, th sorry, this membrane spanning alpha helix here is known as M3, and finally this membrane spanning alpha helix here is known as M4. So that overall is the structure of an individual one of these subunits which makes up the NMDA receptor. You put four of those together and all of these seven genes are pretty much the same structure as far as this is concerned. You put four of those together to make an NMDA receptor which, uh, well you make the pore forming unit of the NMDA receptor and this is a receptor that will open in response to glutamate. Okay, so in the next video what we'll do is we'll look at the function of these NMDA receptors, i.e. Uh, how they respond to glutamate.